Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this hop farm in winter. It's a loose scene and it was painted as a request for one of my patrons. Um, there's a three-part tutorial complete with reference photographs etc. It's very much inspired by the work of Roland Hilda who uh, painted so many beautiful Kent and East Sussex scenes involving oast houses, uh, these sort of pointed towers that were hop drying kilns. In the first part of the tutorial, I look at simplification from photographs, um, thumbnail sketches to discover the best compositions, tonal value studies, and then the last thing that I look at is considering um, a colour study to make sure the colours that you have in mind are going to work in your painting. So if you're interested in that, please um, take a look at the link below. So once I'd done all the preparatory work, the simplification and the sketches, um, I drew out my chosen design onto my paper. Now my paper is Milford cold press paper, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees so that gravity will help me paint. I'm going to paint the sky wet in wet, so using my large uh, Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush, um, I'm going to wet the sky area, cutting around the buildings. I just want a fairly plain sky, uh, but I want some paler clouds behind the buildings to help them to stand out as the focal point. This is Prussian blue and indigo in a quite watery mixture, but still well pigmented. And I'm using horizontal brush strokes to carry it across the page and then I shall use my small Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush to um, lift out carefully just some faint cloud areas. Um, this will ensure that when I paint my buildings with dark trees behind them um, they should really stand out with really good contrasting tonal values against the lighter areas of sky. These clouds will soften back as it dries and now I've laid it flat and it will dry flat without the wash drifting down the page. So back to the large Harke brush and I've got a mixture of burnt umber, burnt sienna and raw sienna on my brush and I'm dry brushing across the landscape, uh, bringing it out from the buildings um, to try to establish um, the beginnings of a sort of rugged, empty winter field. Now I'm going to touch in some tree areas, dipping into some of the darker colours as well, the indigo, a bit of Payne's grey in there, and just touching into the damp sky with richer paint so that it will stay there and start to establish my tree line coming out from behind the buildings and a few little bushes and things in front of the buildings and then dipping into really dark paint indigo paint gray and burnt umber and putting across the foreground some very strong paint to establish a really rough um, broken down old fence with um, just brambles and sort of dead uh, winter hedgerow. That's the sort of look I'm going for there. And then carrying on um, back to the small harky brush and just, just putting in a few more bits and bobs of my trees for the background wash. I can finesse this all a bit later when everything's dry, but for the time being, I just want them to softly diffuse on the damp paper to give me my lovely tree effects. Then I can go into the rich paint in the foreground with my store card and scrape through just the indications of some sticks and twigs, some gate posts, some old broken fence posts. I don't want much going on there. That's going to be very much a something and nothing foreground. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. And once it's dry, um, I'll be able to come back and finish off some of the details and try and bring the painting together. Zooming in here, um, I'm going to begin with my flat brush. I'm going to cut round the pointed cone-shaped roof of the Oast House. I'm using a lovely dark mixture of um, indigo and burnt umber and Payne's grey. 
and by cutting around carefully with the flat brush I get a nice hard edge across the roof and now I can take my calligraphy brush and work into that edge and start to bring it out into the tree that was painted paler in the underpainting. I don't want to cover that up completely because I want some of that to show through but I want this nice dark um, to really help to make the focal point buildings pop out. The buildings of course will be painted in but I'm negatively painting the, the building first with the trees to get the tones right. You can see here that I've painted a bit more and you can really see the buildings beginning to come together. I've sort of cut around the chimney and I'm um, still sort of pulling out my sort of dark foliage and then softening back in places. Um, trying to keep a little bit of variation to the brush strokes um, and then pulling up with the calligraphy brush some bare winter trees. First of all, um, right behind the building here, um, just these really beautiful, simple um, trees, uh, leafless and quite striking. Now this again has the effect of drawing the eye to the buildings. So by increasing the detail of the focal point and leading the eye to the focal point with the, with the sort of tracks in the muddy field, um, we're kind of guiding the viewer to the thing that we want them to look at first. And then hopefully they'll sort of look along the tree line and look at the rest of the painting. So I'm continuing to put more detail into my tree line, bringing together the marks that I put in wet in wet to start with. This tree here that I'm putting in, um, that one's covered in ivy, so it's all sort of overgrown with ivy. And then I can put some sort of leafless branches and a much larger tree. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I can't help that with the filming setup, but I'm painting in a sort of the largest tree in the row, uh, sort of leaning over, and it contrasts really nicely with the trees that have got a bit of foliage and the trees that are covered in ivy. Just putting in a suggestion of a fence leading from the farm and then just crossing along that sort of avenue of trees. Not being too exact about it, just trying to sort of give that loose impression. I'm also adjusting the tones as I go, adding some dark shadows underneath the trees. And then I add some darker dry brush um, across the field just to heighten the contrast in places. Some of that I will soften back a little bit later, but for now um, it's bringing that sort of muddy field along quite nicely. This is burnt sienna and everything's dry so I can put in my oast houses. Um, my oast houses in, in or house in this case, um, the reference photograph had a tiled um, cone. Some of the oast house cones are white. Mine is, as I say, sort of terracotta tiled. So I'm indicating that with burnt sienna, I'll put some shadow in and I shall make sure that the little cone tip, the white tip stands out at the top. So there's the shadow, that's a bit of uh, burnt umber put in while the burnt sienna is still wet, so it's a soft shadow. Back to the same colour, burnt sienna, but a little bit more water added to it to make it a bit lighter. So there's some differentiation in colour, but it's still sort of in colour harmony. Uh, this is my three quarter inch flat brush. If you're working smaller than this, you'll want a smaller flat brush. It's good to get a flat brush that works well for the size of your buildings um, because then you can only use a minimum amount of brushwork. 
So it's a little bit of shadow on the white sort of cone top. Just brings that together a lot more. So I've put a bit more detail, but not too much, into my surrounding buildings. I've pushed the outbuildings at the back, further back with shadow. Um, and now I'm going to just soften up the front part of the field. I'm using a damp um, Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush for this and just softening back where I feel things are a little bit harsh, losing the detail, blurring it up a bit because I want the eye not to be too distracted by the field and the foreground. I want them to be used as like a leading in device to lead the viewer to the buildings and the tree line. Milford paper lifts quite nicely, so if you're careful when you're softening back on the dry paint, you can sort of re-wet it and then, as I've done, sort of uh, almost sort of glaze it across the front of the field and smooth things out. And now back to my small calligraphy brush and I'm going to put the shadows under the eaves and a few windows, maybe a door here and there. Um, a few little marks to emphasise the chimney, that sort of thing. So it's working on the buildings, just balancing them up, getting the shadows in. Because um, it's funny, I mean, colours pop, like the um, burnt sienna on the roofs really draws the eye, but it's the tones as well and the small details in the focal point that draw the eye. The rest of the tree line is sort of, it's got some detail, but mostly it's... It's just brushwork that kind of indicates trees and bushes and hedges and fences and things like that. But the buildings, with this small amount of crisp detail and dark contrasts, um, really do begin to draw the eye. So I think I'm about finished. Um, so I'm going to remove the tape. And once we see it with a clean white border, instead of against this scruffy old board, it helps us to give, helps to give us a good idea as to whether it looks okay or whether it needs any small adjustments. So here it is against a clean white board and I've smoothed out a few slightly distracting details in the field. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. I haven't painted a scene like this for a while and I think it's a good starting point and um, I'm going to be trying to do a few more in this sort of very old-fashioned traditional uh, loose style over the autumn and the winter. So please um, leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you click on the bell icon you'll be notified every time I upload a new video which is at least twice a week. And if you're interested in a more in-depth and in-detail tutorial uh, for this, then follow the link below to Patreon. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon, and happy painting. Bye.